Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm Cassidy, and guess what? It's spooky season! This is my favorite time of the year between the horrors, the scares, the autonomous colors, all of the fun stuff. I just feel like fall comes around and you have so much stuff to do. Like there's pumpkin carving, there's apple bobbing, there's corn mazes, there's Halloween costumes, there's like all these fun things that you can do in these next two, maybe three months. November is kind of more winter for me because I typically have snow, but for September and October it is spooky season and I'm here for all the autumnal vibes. The most exciting part about September is this little thing called Bookoplathon. So today we are picking my TBR for both Becca's Bookoplathon and Snakes and TBR Stacks. I'm playing both games. Somebody tell me that I like to torture myself. There are a little bit of rules that I guess I should explain. If you don't know what Becca's Bookopathon is, it is a readathon that happens every September based on Becca, Becca in the Books, TBR game, and she lets us all play. She makes us her own board, and I will leave the announcement video down below so that you can check it out and you can play. There's two ways to play. Either make a TBR at the beginning of the month or roll as you go. It's a lot of fun. With this, I will be rolling for Becca's Bookopathon first, and then I will doing and then I will be doing Snakes and TBR stacks. I will let books overlap. I'm not making a 10 to 12 book TBR. Uh, well, I could be, but I'm hoping that the rolls will be nice to me and I'll be able to overlap books between the two TBRs just to have one set TBR at the end. So we're going to start with Becca's Book Lopathon and then we're going to roll into Snakes and TBR Stacks. And if you don't know, Snakes and TBR Stacks is my Snakes and Ladders inspired TBR game. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you hit a snake, you go down, you add an extra roll. If you hit a ladder, you get a reward. Simple. I promise you it's simple. Everyone can play along. But with Becca's Book Lopathon, there are two little things that we need to talk about. We have a community shelf and a chance thing. So I have those cards written down. My chance ones are all my required reads for the month. So I have Sabriel, Emperor of Rune, because that's an arc, Voice of War, because that's my Patreon read-along that's starting in September, Shadow of What Was Lost, because that's a backlist book club pick, and Bitter Twins, because that's also a backlist book club pick, because they seem to overlap this month. So I have those. On the community shelf, I tried to make it kind of fun, and I did things that people had to pick for me. So we have a Patreon pick. We have just like a book club pick, nice and simple. But then we have a Mel pick, a Rachel pick, and a Rye pick. I have not told any of them that I'm going to need their services, so hopefully they don't get picked because they're probably working, but here I am. I'm not doing a Cup of Chaos pick this month just because... I did not complete it last month, so I do have two months technically to complete it before I have to pick another Cup of Chaos pick. And if you didn't know, the Cup of Chaos is my top tier patrons all get to suggest a book for me. And, well, suggest. They have to force me to read a book that goes into a cup and I pick it out and I have to read it. la di da di da I really just want to get into the rolls, so let's, let's get into it. I will be doing the rolls in front of me, but you will see them digitally next to me. Okay, where's Go? Okay, Go is right here. I, I'm not going to show you my rolls. You're just going to have to trust me. I'm sorry. I'm fully cheating here. Well, I'm not cheating, but I I just can't make that work completely. We have nine. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Buildings. Oh, I'm doing five rolls. I forgot to say that. Here we are. A building on the cover. That's all it has to have. We have Winds of Strife by Yuji Gutman. This is an indie book about witches. So it's actually about witch hunts that have plagued the kingdom for thousands of years. Uh, even though men have powers, it's only prejudice against the women. And we have a our protagonist who has joined the witch hunters at a young age in order to take them down one day. And now is that day. Now he has the ability to take them down, but he has been indoctrinated into their society for the last however many years, and he's done a lot of things that he regrets, and now it's like a little bit of a torn battle because you've been on the other side. You know, I love stories like this. I love conversations they give, and this is really exciting to get on this TBR because it actually is for a vlog in Boogie Season. Uh, very excited to, you know, witches. Like, I'm hoping that every book that I can put on these TBR will give me some sort of fall spooky season vibe, and this one definitely does with the witches and the witch hunters. Such an amazing spooky season book, and also Mel read it. Mel loved it, and thank you to the author for actually really kindly sending me this copy after he did see me talk about it in a TBR video where I had the Kindle version on my TBR, and I'm very, very excited to get to this one. It is a chunker, and it don't think it has an audiobook. I'm not ent entirely sure, so that's a little scary. 
I'm excited. I'm really, really excited for this one. I think it's going to be a really, really great indie book. And you know me, I love me some indie. Next roll. Three. Okay, no doubles yet. Which is one, two, three. A poll. Okay, that's fun. I love a good poll. And with the next pick, we got poll. So I'm kind of cheating on this one, I think. I'm going to reference you back to my vampire TBR video because I feel like that is just one giant poll. So about a week ago, I posted a video with 10 different vampire books and I will be creating a vlog to come out in October of me reading those vampire books that you picked for me. So I'll be reading two books from that list. And so if you wanna go check out this vlog right now, you can still comment down below. You can still comment on that vlog, which ones you want me to read because they have not been determined quite yet, but I will be reading them late September. So definitely go check out that and that's going to be my poll. Whatever one gets the most votes, I will be reading. Roll three. Eleven. Not a double. Thank the Lord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have a letter, which I think requires me to randomize if I'm correct. So let's do that right now. Okay. Are you ready? Choose generate random letter S. I think that works. I hope that works. That's scary. Okay. Okay. And for the next pick, we got letter. And so the letter I got was S, but it worked out perfectly fine because S Sabriel by Garth Nix. I own this book, but I have no idea where it is. This was actually my cup of chaos pick. It was CC's pick from last month. And it's just carrying on over to this month. I do need to get this done this month. And I'm excited. I do think that this book does scream fall as there are like necromancy themes in it. I am actually kind of struggling. I was thinking about doing a vlog where I read Sabriel and some other book that has necromancy themes, but the only one that ever comes to mind that people think I will like is Gideon and I don't really want to read Gideon. So if you do know a couple books and please don't tell me you think I'm going to like Gideon because I probably will. I'm just not in the mood. So let me know if there are other books that have necromancy themes that you think I will like that I could put into a vlog and read Sabriel with that. Fourth roll. Four. No doubles still. One, two, three, four. Features a mystery. This is perfect. This is actually perfect. That, that one. On our fourth roll, we got features a mystery. This also really, really worked for me. I have so many vlog ideas coming out, and one of the vlogs I really want to do is reading fantasy books with murder mysteries. So this actually just, like, was perfect, and the book I'm picking for this is The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. This has been sitting on my TBR for a long, 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 long time, and both Emma and Maria, who are both my patrons, absolutely adore this book and talk about it all the time. It's a very political book with a murder mystery as like the secondary plot, but there the politics take the forefront. I don't know much about this book. I know that we follow our main character who is half goblin and he is like the second son to the king. And when the first son and the king get murdered, he ends up having to take the crown, but he hasn't grown up in the court. He knows nothing about court politics or court intrigue, and so he's really just, like, thrown into it trying to find his way while also trying to figure out who in the heck murdered his father and his brother and if they're going to try and kill him. I'm really excited. I've heard that this book talks a lot about these small intricates in politics, and that's something I really, really adore, and I think it's going to be a super cozy fall read. Something about this cover really screams fall vibes to me, the idea behind the book. Uh, well, murder mystery in general is just fall. Like, I just, I think that a murder mystery is perfect, perfect autumnal read. And you might see a video coming out with a bunch of fantasy books that have murder mysteries in them. Uh, a vlog as well as a recommendation list. Because it's one of my favorite, favorite tropes you can do is a murder mystery subplot within a fantasy book. Fifth roll. Six, seven, eight... Hey, that's my last roll. I didn't get a single double. That's kind of lame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's winter. And I'm just not in the winter vibe. You know what? I'm pulling out a Becca roll and I will be rolling again, which means I will have to pick two books for the next prompt. So I put my books up to six, but I just, I don't have any winter vibed books that I want to read. It's fall. I don't want winter. Fall only lasts so long here. Winter lasts like forever. Watch this be a double now. I'm gonna regret my life if it is. Ten. Not a double. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're at spring. I'm not okay with that. If I skip this one, 
Then I'm on... Do I have to put eight books on my TBR? We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it! I'm choosing chaos! I really hope Snakes and Ladders... I can read eight, but I hope Snakes and Ladders is nice to me. Wait, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I feel like this is kind of cheating, but I don't want to put, like, four... I don't want to have to pick four for the next roll. I'm going to do... Um, another roll, pick two, and another roll, pick two, and hope that I don't get a freaking double, okay? I just, I can't do these season ones right now. Five, okay. One, two, three, four, five. Dice roll roulette, which I need to figure out the rules for. Give me one moment. <laughs> la di da di da let me get instructions up. What is, oh my lord, I'm being attacked by a fake plant. See? It's spooky season. Plants come to life and they attack you. Okay, so I have to roll the dice and the um, each dot on the dice accounts for 50 pages. I'm going to do this twice just to make it more fun so that both my picks have different page numbers. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, which is 425 to 474 pages. And the second one, seven, which is 325 to 374. That one could be hard for me. And then the board just started to hate me. And we are on dice roulette. Now I had to do this twice and I got two different numbers. So the first one is a book between 425 and 474 pages. This worked in my favor because I can read A Touch of Light by Tiago Abdullah. Tiago Abdullah, I'm so sorry I'm butchering your name. This is a book that I've heard people scream about the, scream to the top of the heavens about. I think that this is a contender for the winner of Spiffbo, SPFBO, and I'm very, very excited to get to this. I think even if it doesn't make it as a winner, I'm just, I've heard nothing but great things about this. I know absolutely nothing about this book besides the fact that it literally just screams fall to me like like fall this cover gives me like fall and i also know there's griffins in it how far would you go to resurrect someone you love would you change who you are to show you belong uh we follow a bunch of different characters who are doing a bunch of things we're following three characters we're following adrian who is a prince of one of the domain natures lynn who is a rogue elite warrior hiding from her past and nasha a gifted hunter hiding a terrible secret a lifelong outcast. Uh, but now a terrifying foe creeps near and the people of Averin must fight to save it before death comes for them all. Dive into this sweeping epic fantasy saga where religion and politics are one, magic brings terror into the hearts of men, and a looming blight threatens to tear everything down. I, I just want to read this. I'm going to murder this plant behind me and then there will be a murder mystery book about Cassie and her plant. Who killed the plant? I just said it on the internet though, so I don't know if it's much of a mystery. And it's already fake, so it's dead. I, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But yeah, I just want to read this. I really want to read it, so I'm happy I got on the TBR. And for that second roll, I got a book between 325 to 374 pages. Which, you know, September is the month of indie. Voice of War, which is the first book in the Threadlight series. I am doing a Threadlight read-along over on my Patreon with the second and third tier currently. So we are reading Threadlight in September... November and January, uh, book one, two, and three, and this is a, another indie that has been shouted from the rooftops. It's often compared to Mistborn in terms of magic system. I've seen so many people rave about the family relations in this. It's, I know absolutely nothing about this besides that it's incredible, and I'm super excited to read it. The back just says, how far will a man go to protect those he loves? A soon-to-be father with a dark voice in his head, a sheltered girl addicted to threadlight, a young man whose life changes after he dies. Together they will change the world whether they intend to or not. The last book of the series is just coming out and everyone says the ending is like hits with a bang. I feel like I haven't heard this many people talk about a great ending since uh, Fonda Lee's Jade Legacy, the Greenbone Saga, and I'm so excited to get to this and I'm super excited that my patrons will be joining me. September 1st is a great time to join my patron. If you are interested, please never feel like you have to. It's just an extra add-on for those people who want it and can support me in that way but please please never feel like you have to but september 1st is the best day to join as you get a whole month's worth of content for the price of that month and we're starting thread light uh, also mel's patron is invited to this and her top tier i think whatever tier gets your her book club will be joining us okay okay now now we get to roll again for the the board eight i didn't land on summer 
I'm going to murder someone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, a favorite setting. That works perfectly for me. I like that one. Oh, I have to pick two for that. That is such a nice prompt to get to have to pick two for. And then I got favorite setting, which I get to do two times, which is lots of fun. So the first one, I actually picked two different favorite settings because I had to. The first one is Clown in a Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives. I absolutely adored the first one, and I love a, like, slasher corn maze setting. Like, Children of the Corn, great book. Uh, Children of the Corn, great movie. I loved the first one. I love that, like, oh my god, we're trapped in a corn maze. I don't know what it is. It's like an isolated setting and I love an isolated setting, okay? And I'm really, really excited to get this, the second one in the series. It may be for a vlog. Clouds are a little bit scary, you know. Might be coming out September, October. The first one follows uh, a... The first one is a slasher book about a bunch of kids who there is a clown in the cornfield trying to kill them. That's like the easiest way to explain it. And it's, it's a YA slasher. It's a lot of fun and I highly highly recommend it to people who want a slasher for the spooky season i cannot wait to read the second one so i'm really excited it got on this list and then for my second favorite setting it is poison song by jen williams i absolutely adore the setting of these books it is this post-apocalyptic type world like it's a dying world and i really really have been enjoying that kind of like sci-fi fantasy setting where it's a little bit different than anything else you've ever read before and I really really just enjoy the setting so I think it counts as a favorite setting. I think it's one of my all-time favorite settings in fantasy. I just adore the setting of the Winnowing Flame trilogy and if you don't know the first book which is The Ninth Rain, we're following a world that is dying. That every couple of years there is a rain from the aliens. The aliens come to just like decimate the world but thankfully we have these vampire godlike creatures who have these beasts that and this tree god that fight the aliens away the last rain something happened and the tree god died so the tree god can now no longer give its sap to those it needs and the vampires are dying off and when the next rain comes how in the heck are they supposed to survive it without these vampires? And it's just like incredible. I love, love, love this series. It's the Backlist Book Club pick. We have a live show middle to end of September because my schedule sucks. And if you want more information on the third live show, please follow us on Instagram and on Twitter. On Twitter, it's Backlist B Club and on Instagram, it's Backlist Books. They'll all be linked in the description bar below for you. And that's the end of my book all on TBR. So I think it's actually really interesting that although I have eight books on this TBR, all eight are actually required reading for me in the next month in order to get either book club live shows out or vlogs out. I have a very, very busy month of photography, but also a very, very busy month of content. I have so much content planned. I'm so excited to get it out to everyone. And yeah, but... My TBR is not over now, so we need to roll on into uh, TBR snakes and ladders, snakes and TBR stacks. So let's go do the rolls for that. Let's go. Roll one, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, continue. Okay. Uh, roll one, we got continue. When I made this board, I wasn't as big of a booktuber. Like, I wasn't as, like, intense and as actively into it as I am now. So, Continue was a way for me to, like, kind of put video project on, but also if I didn't have any video projects to be able to, like, continue a series. So, essentially, Continue was just, like, continue what you're doing. Continue your video project, continue a series, continue a book that you have, like, have, in, have soft DNF'd, anything like that. In the future, when I remake this board, Continue will just become video project because I now always have video projects on the go. So for this video, I'm treating it in that kind of way. So the first book I am putting on this TBR is City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is for a vlog. I have no idea what this book is about. I was literally just looking up books with this subgenre, this trope that I needed, and this was on the list, and I have enjoyed a Robert Jackson Bennett bef book before. I enjoyed Foundryside. So I was like, you know what, this is the one I'm going to read for this vlog. So other than that, I think there's gods, but I have no other idea what this book is about. So I can't really give you a synopsis, but I will be reading it for a video. <laughs> and if you're counting, that is nine books now on the TV. 12. 
12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Mixed reviews. Oh no, that's a scary one. For the next roll, we got mixed reviews. Mixed reviews is a hard one. When I was actively sitting here trying to think of like mixed review books, like books like not stretching it at all. I could not really think of it, but I'm going with Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I have read Grady Hendrix before, and I think that's where my mixed review comes from, is that my review is opposite typically. Uh, lots of people have loved Grady Hendrix, and I loved, I adored the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. My Best Friend's Exorcism and Final Girl Support Group were both just meh. And I think that overwhelmingly people say that this is his best book, but I don't trust these best books anymore. And I do know a lot of people who have just said, like, it's still just meh, like his books are meh. So uh, this is my mixed review. All I know is this is a haunted house type story. It's about a haunted Ikea, haunted ripoff Ikea. And this is so cool because it's written to look like an Ikea catalog. And it's such an interesting style. And I'm super excited to read this. If you're counting, that's 10 books on the TBR. 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. History. And then we landed on history. And history is just like a historical setting. It's a setting I really like. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing this is going to be a bit of a historical setting. Just like those, you know, like that classic fantasy, no guns, no technology. That's what I kind of mean by history. And I'm, I'm expecting this, especially with the sword, super sword and sorcery type vibes, uh, historical setting. I'm not going to tell you what A Touch of Light is about because I obviously did that earlier and failed miserably at it. But yeah, this is the next book on the TBR. Fourth Prowl. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got a mood read. The board loves me today. And then we got mood. And mood, I'm just I'm just leaving mood open. I don't need to tell you anything because typically this mood read will probably be something that was on the book awfulthon TBR. I get to pick this at any point during the month, so it does not need to be put on this TBR. And I'm very excited the board was nice to me and gave me a mood. Although I have so many books I need to read this month anyways that meh. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A big book. And then we get big book, which big book is 500 plus pages. And I'm putting Winds of Strife on the Snakes and Ladders TBR stacks. TBR, Winds of Strife. I already explained to you. It is just over 500 pages. So it counts as a big book. And I'm super, super excited to get to it. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Continue again. And then we hit continue again, and again, it's just a video project that I'm continuing, and I'm putting The Goblin Emperor by Katherine Addison on. I, 10 books is my limit. Like, I cannot read more than 10 books in a month, and I actually am reading more than 10 books in a month, I think, because I have so many video projects on the, on, on the go. I'm really, really trying to get you all out content, and yeah, that is the last book. I also forgot to say that I had six rolls this month because I did not complete my TBR last month, which is really ridiculous because it's it should have been completed. But, you know, six books were good. Other than that, I have one last important piece of information to give to you guys. Well, I have a lot. We can sit down and talk about what my plans are for spooky season first off. So the base plan is I'm hoping to get a vlog to you every Saturday and a recommendation list every like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Like, so essentially I, I can't sit to, stick to a schedule. So Saturday might even be pushing it, but like a vlog every week and a recommendation list every week and then some other video. That is my hope. So a lot of vlogs, a lot of recommendation lists, and they'll all be like autumnal, spooky inspired. So I'm super excited that you can look out for the first week of September, a school setting, fantasy books with school settings, recommendation list, and a reading dark academia vlog super excited about those. But other than that, my real, real important part of coming here and sitting down with you right now is Late Night Crew launched Spooky Season merch. We launched this design, which is this adorable little ghosty that I, I got to draw. And um, I think he's really cute and I'm super duper excited for this design. The They are on Bonfire. Again, that's where you can find our clothing. We have crew necks, t-shirts and long sleeves and there's four different colors for each one. We tried to be as inclusive as we could about sizing but we are only in so much control of it so things just change on bonfire all the time but I think that there is at least one thing in every one color in every shirt that is very 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 inclusive 
And yeah, I'm very excited. I ordered a gray crew neck and I ordered a green, olive green t-shirt for myself thing. And then we also did try this time to put it on Redbubble. So it is on Redbubble, but just, I think there's t-shirts on there, but then there's cups, tote bags, uh, stickers, magnets, some super fun stuff for anyone that is across the pond from us. And Bonfire is a little expensive to ship to. There is Redbubble. Uh, I personally prefer the quality of Bonfire. So that's why we did more clothing and stuff on Bonfire. And if you can get Bonfire, I highly recommend it. The quality of Bonfire is incredible, but definitely uh, it's nice to be able to get stuff to everyone by using Redbubble. So I will have the links down below to both of those shops. As always, thank you so much for supporting us. Me, Mel, and Rai truly appreciate all of you. We have had such a great time on BookTube, and I know all three of us have incredible content coming out for spooky season. It's been so much fun trying to brainstorm with everyone, and I'm, I'm super looking forward to seeing all of their content, and I hope you are too. And I really hope you come back to this channel a couple times during the next couple months, because... We have so much fun stuff happening. There'll be crazy makeup looks and because I, I can do special effects makeup. So definitely I have a clown vlog coming where you might see me, you might see Cassie the clown come out and so much other fun stuff. Uh, yeah, other than that, if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my Goodreads, my Bookstagram, my Book Twitter, and my Patreon, I'll link down in the description bar below. And have yourselves an absolutely incredible day. <laughs>